Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Okay, so I am going to preface this post by saying that the entrance to my property is a standard driveway through roughly 20 meters of wooded area. Before the driveway opens up to about the same size as a standard American two-lane roadway. My home sits about 500 meters back off of the road and I've sculpted my driveway. As well as a pass in front of my home and a lot of my backyard into a drift track. We have two giant no trespassing signs at the road facing side of the woods as well as a speed limit 15 sign 10 meters beyond the woods. Mainly to remind my friends not to be jerks on their way in when the track isn't hot. Everything is above board with the county, my homeowner's insurance and local PD. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the story. I went to the port today to pick up a much-awaited 1997 Nissan Stadia we are building for my mate. As the mate and I are pulling down the drive in a truck, pulling the trailer with a car on it, my mate yells, what the hell is that? And points off to the corner of the paved part of my property where I have a medium-sized shed which I keep landscaping things like a tractor, golf cart and so on in. I look over to see the nose of a 2016-2017 Mustang stick out of a now collapsed shed and a guy lay in on the pavement next to it. We immediately drove straight over with haste. As we pull up, our entitled person sits up from his prone position and starts yelling about suing me, calling me a jerk and a bunch of other names. I yelled as loud as I could, hey, I just said, who the hell are you? What are you doing on my property? Why is your car in my shed? To which this entitled person responds, I am going to sue you, as your racetrack isn't safe and you owe me a new car. By this point my mate is already on the phone with 911 and has hopped back into the truck. I explain to this jerk that he's trespassing and in fact he owes me a shed and probably a few other things including a tractor. This entitled person starts to limp toward me screaming that he's going to own my property and I won't have a pot to piss in when he's done with me. I decided to just get back into the truck and waited on police. Roughly 15 minutes later, two police cars come screaming down my driveway with their lights and sirens on and they see the entitled person beating on the window of my truck with his hands. PD immediately handcuffs him and then my mate and I step out of the truck. This guy told the police that he has been driving past my property all summer and hearing engines and tar squelching from the roadway and finally decided that he was going to run a few laps today. That he saw the no trespassing signs but didn't think they were there for him. Who else would they be there for though? The guy was arrested on malicious destruction of property until a company in town came and impounded his vehicle. And I was finally able to see that the entire shed and everything in it is a total loss. The entitled person did leave in an ambulance, though he should be fine. Insurance is going to have a field day with this one. I'd just like to add that that particular shed sits about 25 feet off of the paved surface. I really hope next year doesn't have as many stressful events as this one. I'm starting by adding a gate with a code to enter the property this week. So this is not my story but my dad's. It'll practically be just my dad and the idiot of this story. No, but my dad did not know this idiot personally. So my dad works as a police chief. The idiot robbed a store, got caught and the judge sentenced the idiot one year in jail. My dad and his team were to take him to the prison, but it was late and they wanted to go home already and they had already given their guns back to the police station. So they go pick up the idiot and they drive this idiot to the prison and when he gets out he tries to run for it, but he was handcuffed and the snow was up to your knees, so he barely got 10 meters before this idiot got caught and my dad brought him in. But my dad knows that he would need to write up a report for the fact that this idiot tried to escape, but it was really late. 
and my dad wanted to get home and just let this idiot off the hook for it. In those times back then, you could do that. Here is the best part. This guy started to write to my dad's boss about how when I tried to run, they started to shoot at me and blah blah blah. And of course, my dad's boss was confused because my dad never gave a report about an attempt of escape. So, another trial started and it was about the attempt of escape with the same judge. This guy started to whine to the judge about how they started to shoot at him and he almost died. But remember how I said my dad already gave his gun up to the police station before he went to pick up this idiot? Well, every time you give your gun back, you need to sign signatures and at what time you gave your gun. And the only thing they had to show is one piece of paper which had proved that they didn't even have guns on them at that moment so the judge then gave this idiot three more years in jail. Wow, that didn't work out for him. Idiot. So yeah, here is a little background. I live in Costa Rica, I speak Spanish, and I'm a 32 years old. This happened 8 years ago when I was 24. The characters. Me, an entitled mother, an entitled daughter, and three police officers. This happened when I got my driver license. Yeah, I got it so late. I had a very cheap car. It worked very well though. I was driving to pick up my friend because we had planned to go to a party that night and there was the entitled mother and her daughter. And a conversation like this happened. The entitled mother says, Hi, I really love your car. Thank you, it's a little old but still works very well. You know, my daughter just got her driver license, and we have been searching for a car we can afford but still can't find one. Oh, well, good luck in finding one. Um, can I have your car? What? No. Why? You don't need it. What makes you think about that? Listen, if you don't give me your car, I will call the police. Whoa, call it then. At this point, the entitled daughter was so tired, but her mom still keeps trying to get my car. Then she actually goes and calls the police, and shortly after they arrive. What is the problem here? This guy is trying to rob my car. What the hell? I have proof this is my car. She doesn't have proof it's hers. Ma'am, do you have proof? The entitled mother stays quiet, so one of the officers takes the handcuffs out. I was about to take my driver license and all the car stuff, and Officer 1 electrocuted me. I was shocked. He thought I was going to take a gun or something like that. Then I told him what I was going to do. We started talking and I told him what actually happened. Thank God there was a camera with a microphone there. And Officer 2 arrested the entitled mother on the spot. The entitled daughter then went with her father later. Officer 1 then apologized for the misunderstanding and I didn't really make it long as it's part of his job to be careful of such things after all. The party went great even though my friends and I got to the party half an hour later. That was a crazy experience though. Definitely not the kind of thing you think of happening to you when you're going to a party. Getting accused by a Karen of stealing your own car, then tased by a police officer who feel threatened by your moves. Hmm, how refreshing. For context, I work at a retail store. This incident happened back when COVID was just starting to become a real problem. End of March into April. So I was working up front as I usually do. Today, however, instead of being in one set place for my shift, I was kind of everywhere. I work self-scan, front desk, order pickup, drive up, cashier and money runner. It was when I was running some money over to our cafe area, they were running out of small bills when I noticed this older woman by our carts. Now we have some mobile scooters for use for people who cannot walk for themselves, mostly reserved for the elderly or with really bad foot or leg injuries. This woman was older, maybe 70s or 80s and parking at the poor girl in charge of cleaning carts to hurry up and get her scooter clean. That she didn't need it clean. That this whole virus was fake news. That she missed the spot and just generally being a witch. 
Now, as I'm walking by, I notice she's passing back and forth with no noticeable problems walking. And she has a lot of energy. So, I realize she's an entitled lady who just doesn't want to walk around the store. I roll my eyes and drop off the money. While doing so, I am called to come cover a cashier break. No problem. I walk back past the entitled lady and I get the strongest whiff of alcohol I've smelled outside of 4th of July barbecue. She has a plastic bag with her filled with empty beer bottles, but I can't tell if that's where the smell is coming from or if it's from her. I start getting a sinking feeling that this lady means trouble, but what can I do? And lo and behold, I was right. While I'm cashiering, the entitled lady goes into the long line of customer service and waits. That's when it hits me. She wants to do a bottle return. The store I work at doesn't have a bottle return place anywhere in it, but we can take a few bottles back with certain limits. We have a $5 limit on returns. We can't return bottles or cans we don't sell, and we don't take any beer or alcohol bottles back. Those are the main rules. Well, the entitled lady gets up there and is informed of the no beer bottle return rule. The one rule we can be flexible on. And she has a fit. Screaming at the manager who just so happens to be up there trying to thin the line. That she was stupid because she's done them here before. The manager tells her no. And the entitled lady slams her grocery bag of beer bottles on the counter definitely breaking some of them, before walking herself and the bag back to her scooter, which she parked about two feet back from the counter, and she drives away. Not at the front entrance though. I thought maybe she left out the mall entrance. Nope. Turns out she was just trying to return the beer bottles to be able to pay for her prescription at the CVS we have at the back of our store. Now, I was up front when all of this was happening, but my security guy friend filled me in on it later. So the entitled lady had gone to CVS and had asked to get her prescription. Her insurance didn't cover everything, so there was a small fee. Now obviously she didn't have any money, so she tried to take it. The CVS guy was not an idiot and wouldn't let her. And so she got mad. She started cussing up a storm and getting very physical with the CVS guy. Never mind that he was behind the counter. The entitled lady then went up to various other customers and tried to persuade and threaten them to give her the money. Security had been called at this point, but this lady got really desperate and pulled out a small kitchen knife. Yeah, not pocket knife, kitchen knife. And she walked over to the CVS guy and waved it at him and told him to give her the medicine she needed. Security of course saw this confiscated her knife and started calling the police. She started walking away, abandoning her cart and bag of beer bottles. But security grabbed her and started walking her towards the front. Now, I was still a working cashier while all this was happening. But they passed by my lane on their way up. It was during one of the few quiet moments of the day. I was putting on some hand sanitizer when I spotted her. I didn't recognize her right away and thought she was a customer. So I put on my best customer service smile and asked, Hi, how are you today? To which the entitled lady responded, I need my medicine or I'm going to puke. I just remembered kind of blinking in response and going, Um, okay? Because how else do you respond to that? That's when I noticed the security guy behind her kind of frown and shake his head. I later found out that she was doing this on the entire walk to garner sympathy. It didn't work cause people were too distracted by the toilet paper to notice her. So the entitled lady is taken to the security office to await the police, but the entire time she's saying she needs her medicine, she's supposed to be at the home now, where is her little n-word helper, you can't do this to me and so on. And that's when management is approached by police and a hospice worker who looks so very tired and done with everything. The hospice worker explains the old lady got out of the nearby home and tried to get her medicine herself, instead of just waiting for herself or the care home workers to get it for her. The security and police explain what happens. The hospice worker sighs and explains that, while she has no history of mental illness, 
or even drug issues that she or the care home know of, this kind of thing happens very often. The hospice worker, the police and the security head over to the security's office and are in there for a good half an hour before they come out again and the hospice worker is leading the way while the police are escorting the entitled lady out of the store. She is not in handcuffs, but the police are hovering very close by and are kind of giving her the stare down. The entitled lady, for her part, is telling the police to arrest the hospice worker because it's that inward's fault for throwing her out and that she needs her medicine and blah blah blah. Long story short, charges were pressed and she ended up being arrested. That entitled lady is by far one of the craziest people I have ever met. I hope the hospice worker and care home people assigned to her got some sort of raise on top of cover pay to having to deal with her and that this entitled lady got the help she so obviously needs. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.